Howdy, Rex here. So we just got done talking about muzzle brake pull-off. Uh, interesting topic. Uh, so I thought that we should do just a quick one reviewing just muzzle brakes in general and answering some of the questions a lot of you have been having about muzzle brakes. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of brakes available out there that you can put on your rifle. And for the most part, any of the commercially available ones, if installed correctly by a competent gunsmith, are not going to negatively affect your accuracy. And pretty much all of them will effectively reduce the felt recoil that you're going to feel on your shoulder. So, that being said, there are different design types uh, that you do probably want to look out for uh, that you don't want to use for our purposes. I'm not going to get into brand names so much because a muzzle brake is a very, very simple device. There's not a whole lot to it. You simply have ports or baffles that redirect gas backwards. Um, they're usually going to be made out of steel or something like that. You don't need any fancy steel alloys or anything. Uh, a muzzle brake is a simple device. There's no need to overcomplicate it. Uh, there are certain design characteristics you do want to look out for. You don't want ports facing downward. For our shooting discipline, we're going to be laying on the ground a lot and uh, shooting prone. And if that's the case, out in the field, you're not going to have time sometimes to deploy a wet cloth underneath your muzzle to absorb that, uh, that blast so that it doesn't kick dirt in your face. So some of the old style porting that uh, they used to have on the muzzles of rifles that used to be popular uh, before the side ports got more popular is where you have, and I can show a picture of one right here, is you have the holes kind of all the way around 360 degrees around the, the muzzle. And uh, those effectively reduce recoil fine, but uh, they're going to kick dirt in your face. That's not going to be good. So what you're looking for is a port more like this one here. And that's going to be you're going to have the port situated on the side. Uh, some of the different designs do have some ports facing upwards as well. So you have the main baffles on the sides and then a couple points uh, ports uh, going up. And that will keep your, your recoil down so it won't recoil up too far. And that will keep you uh, on target pretty good so you can observe your own bullet trace going through the air on a heavy recoiling rifle. Uh, that being said, there's uh, not a whole lot of differences in my opinion between different brand names. There's a lot of proprietary guys out there who work in their shops who kind of duplicate designs or come up with their own port designs. There's a lot of off brands that you never heard of that work every bit as good as the real expensive fancy brands. Uh, if you are planning on using a suppressor or something like that down the road, you might want to plan ahead for that and uh, plan on which type of suppressor you're going to use. And uh, you can, some of the muzzle brakes available, you can, uh, they have fast attach features on them so that you can just attach a suppressor over the top of a muzzle brake. And we'll get more into suppressors in, uh, in a lot more detail in transitional ballistics right after we finish up uh, with the muzzle velocity vari variation section, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, so if you're going to get a suppressor, maybe look at the Surefire muzzle brakes. That's what I use on my uh, 338. And uh, it's a little more expensive, but it's a very effective muzzle brake, and it does work with the fast attach with the Surefire suppressors. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, other than that, uh, generally speaking, a lot of guys use muzzle brakes when they don't really need them. In my opinion, I only uh, will suggest using a muzzle brake if it's like absolutely necessary if the recoils are a real harsh recoil. Like when you get in your big magnums that are very, very uncomfortable to shoot laying down, then a muzzle brake is the medicine. There's, uh, there's better ways to combat recoil, in my opinion. I think the best way to combat recoil is just adding weight on your rifle, just having a heavy rifle set up. That's why a lot of target rifles are just kind of bulky and heavy. That will significantly reduce your recoil. That's probably the best way to do it. And it'll reduce the effects of muzzle brake pull-off, which we discussed in the video before this one, which can really throw you off, especially in a big bore rifle. Um, but in a certain, once you get a certain size, like a 338, you really, you really are going to need a muzzle brake to tame that thing down, or it's going to really beat the crap out of you when you're laying there. Um, like a 300 uh, Winchester Magnum, uh, that can be a pretty, if you're going to lay down all day and shoot it, a muzzle brake might be good investment. Just make sure you look for those design features we talked about. You want ports on the side, maybe a couple on the top, and that's fine. Just don't have anything shooting downward into the dirt. Uh, be aware that muzzle brakes do severely increase the noise. 
So you're going to really have to actually use your hearing protection. You can't forget not to use it one day. It'll blow your ears right out of your head. It'll increase the decibels like 5, 10, 15 decibels depending on the type of muzzle brakes. So that's something to be aware of. Another thing is it'll severely increase the, the felt percussion or concussion coming backwards, especially if you have a spotter. Uh, that's one thing where muzzle brakes can really kind of hinder a, a, sh a shooter spotter team. Is your spotter classically situated on your five o'clock, just looking right over your uh, your right shoulder, and uh, uh, ports on on the muzzle brake are usually oriented kind of in that direction, so they can really have a huge increase in felt concussion and uh, blast, and that can be extremely uncomfortable. It can even throw a spotter off. So uh, sometimes it can cause the optics to wiggle, and it might you might lose uh, sight of your your bullet trace. Uh, because if it's wiggling right when the blast hits, uh, it might go out of focus a little bit. So it might cause problems there. So you might have to resituate how you got your spotter laying behind you. You might have to be farther behind you. So keep all those things in mind if you're looking to do a muzzle brake. There's another very, very effective way to reduce recoil that a lot of people aren't familiar with, and it's a mercury recoil suppressor. And that's not a brand name. There's a lot of different brands that make them, but I'm talking mercury liquid metal. And they're little tubes, and they have a mercury blob in there. And you basically install that inside the buttstock of the rifle, underneath where no one sees it. And uh, you situate it kind of at an angle. And what happens is, on a sharp recoiling rifle, as recoil happens, that mercury mass, that huge mass of mercury, because it's real heavy, uh, has to kind of fight its way through that tube. And that'll absorb a lot of the sharpness of the recoil. It works tremendously well, surprisingly well. And when you get them in the mail, they're just a little stick like this, a little round a uh, cylindrical metal stick and you just stick them in the stock there and a lot of guys are skeptical like they don't work but actually they're very commonly used on big bore uh, like elephant rifles big game dangerous game rifles and they work very well uh, Dinosaur Ichi has a 35 Whalen uh, running around these videos and it was a pretty solid kicker it wasn't like super bad it wasn't real sharp it was kind of a big just a big kick and uh, it was a little bit uncomfortable for him to shoot, but we installed one of those mercury recoil suppressors in there, and that tamed it right down. I mean, it doesn't even kick like a 25 out of 6 now. Maybe around a 243, somewhere in that area. So it tamed it right down to like a like a smaller size rifle, as far as recoil is concerned. So a mercury stick does work quite well. I haven't done extensive testing as to the uh, harmonic effects that that'll have on your rifle, but uh, as far as we've tested so far... Uh, there's no noticeable difference in point of impact or harmonic uh, inconsistencies that develop. We haven't experienced that yet. So uh, that's one thing that you might want to consider if you have a sharp recoiling rifle. And I'm going to do some further testing on that just to verify that for you guys. But uh, muzzle brakes do work pretty good. Just be advised they do severely increase the, the noise and also the, the concussion. Even if you're wearing earplugs, like, and we talked about this on the big 50 caliber brakes, they're going to have a huge increase in the concussion. If you've ever lay behind a 50 caliber before and shot, um, the uncomfort, the uncomfortable experience is not the felt recoil on the shoulder. That's pretty much taken care of, but it's the blast, the concussion. If you have your mouth, if your lips are even cracked a little bit when you pull the trigger, uh, you'll feel that... Uh, that air will go into your mouth and it'll blast your, it'll go up in your sinuses and you'll have air bubbles coming out of your eyes sometimes. It's very, it's weird. So if you're not used to it, it could be quite uncomfortable, especially in a big bore. We have a huge displacement of gas happening up there, a big blast, big concussion. So that's like a blast induced nasal concussion can be very, very uh, uncomfortable if you're not used to it. And that's what a lot of guys actually hate the most. They can't explain exactly what it is, but that's kind of what it is. So uh, it'll also push your eyes. If you wear contact lenses and you're shooting a big bore rifle uh, equipped with a muzzle brake, even a 338 or a 300 or even a 7 millimeter Magnum, if you have contact lenses, uh, it's been reported that they will actually compress up against your eyeballs like a soft lens temporarily. It's like when you pull the trigger, boom, eyes go out of focus a little bit and uh, it takes a second for them to pop back out. So a lot of guys report that... Uh, that's kind of a problem too. So just things to be aware of anytime you increase the blast coming back at you, that's a trade-off. So it's not all a win-win situation with muzzle brakes. If you really, really need to use one from heavy recoil, go ahead. But be just be aware of those things that are the drawbacks. 
so that you're not disappointed when you get situated on one. Uh, for me, uh, even on a 7mm Magnum, uh, if for a target rifle, a muzzle brake, that's right on the border. About a 7mm Magnum and up is where you might, might want to start looking at muzzle brakes. And they do work very well, but like I said before, they have those side effects too. Uh, anything under a 7mm Magnum, any are uh, 260s, you're even 308, 30-odd 6, uh, things in, in that class. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't recommend a muzzle brake. Some guys do like to use them anyways, but I don't think the trade-offs are worth it uh, for that cartridge range. But, you know, uh, I won't argue with someone if they do feel that it does help them a lot or if, uh, if they're having a hard time keeping the rifle situated on target after they fire and they want to spot their own rounds, a muzzle brake can be very effective in helping them. So it's kind of a, a user's preference deal. Which deal are you willing to fight with? The felt recoil in the shoulder or the increased blasting concussion? So you got to pick which one you're going to deal with. Otherwise, brand names, uh, I wouldn't worry about brand names. Just look at the design feature and make your decision. Okay, next video, um, before we get into muzzle velocity variation and we start uh, finally building our charts, uh, I'm going to do a quick video. Uh, I have to mount an optic on my wife's rifle, so I'm going to record that for you guys so you can see how that works. A lot of guys have been asking about uh, scope mounting, and we'll just visit about it. It's not going to be a real fancy video, but... Stay tuned for that, and then we'll get into muzzle velocity variation and how to start logging your muzzle velocities and writing those down and uh, making a, a chart out of it so that you can use that for our long-range charts. All right, catch you in a minute.